Hear ye, hear ye. Hello everyone, and welcome to another video. As some of you may have seen from my post, I got a new and improved microphone setup. So I hope that it makes my videos that much better. Wait, what? Uh, sorry about that. I just had to take my T-51 power armor helmet off and... Wow, it sounds so much better like this. Why didn't any of you say something earlier? In all seriousness, I just want to thank everyone for their support. And it is because of you that I've been able to upgrade my recording equipment to something that is much nicer. I am deeply grateful for your support and encouraging comments. And still grateful, but admittedly less so for the... Uh, shall we say, more pointed comments. But you know what they say, it takes all types. Enough of this though, let me introduce the video. Per a viewer request, I'm going to be looking at the chems of Fallout. Due to the large number of chems, I am splitting them into two videos. One about the addictive chems, and one about the non-addictive chems. So, let's get started with some of our favorite habit-forming chems in this video. Buffout is a very common chem that has been found in every Fallout game to date. They are shown as a fairly generic small green pill and stored in brown bottles that have a large Buffout logo. Buffout increases strength, agility, and endurance in Fallout and Fallout 2, but changes slightly in Fallout 3 and later games by increasing strength, endurance, and tacking on an extra 60 HP. Seeing as it increases strength, it is not surprising to know that this was a kind of anabolic steroid that, according to lore, was very well known in pre-war America and used in secret by athletes. Given that the bottles that hold the drug have a big old logo on them and it is very easy to find in the wasteland, buff out use and abuse must have been very widespread. We can inspect the label from the Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 3 versions and see that it has a bunch of information and what looks like an expiration date of 1013. If I correctly interpret this as October 2013, that means a lot of this buff out was expired well before the Great War. But it seems like it still has an effect centuries later when coked out raiders are coming at you with a pool cue. An interesting note is that apparently an extract of buff out can be used to cure rickets. And in the original Fallout demo, Buffout was shown as being a hypodermic needle containing a red liquid. Variants of Buffout include Buff Tats, Buff Jet, and Psycho Buff, which is simply a mixture of Buffout with other well-known chems. Colmex is a chem that can be found in Fallout 4 and Fallout 76 only. It is represented by a hypodermic needle with some sort of purple liquid inside. The chem has an effect of increasing agility and perception, and also giving times 2 sneak damage. It is described as a light tranquilizer that is not strong enough to take away pain, but can calm jitters and anxieties. Most minor tranquilizers in the real world include things like benzodiazepines, and all the minor tranquilizers that I could find were only in pill form, not injected. This makes me wonder if instead of what is referred to as a minor tranquilizer, it is in fact a diluted form of a stronger tranquilizer. There is a form of Calmex that is made using bloodworm meat in the Nuka World DLC that is called Calmex Silk. It has the added benefit of giving the user an extra 3 luck, for whatever reason. Daddio is a chem only found in Fallout 4 and Fallout 76 and has two vials that are injected via a hypodermic needle. The double vial setup kind of reminds me of epoxy. The in-game effect is an increase in intelligence and perception, but with a decrease in charisma. There is an in-game description that states that the drug was used heavily by beatniks and intellectuals prior to the Great War. Being associated with beatniks would make the name Daddio pretty appropriate, but we are left asking, what was the real-world analog of this chem? Looking at the effects of increasing perception and intelligence while reducing charisma, 
it would lead me to think of a hallucinogen since it might reduce a person's ability to communicate coherently while also boosting creativity. I can't identify such a substance that would be administered via injection since most are taken orally and truthfully, injection seems a bit hardcore for beatniks and intellectuals. Jet is a very well-known chem that has spanned all the games except the original Fallout, and of course is the subject of a pretty heated controversy within the fanbase. It is also one of the chems that has the most lore since it played a really pivotal role in Fallout 2. Depicted as some sort of breathable aerosol, the effects of the chem are increased action points, strength, and perception in Fallout 2 but was changed to only increase the number of action points in Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. The effects would change again with Fallout 4 and Fallout 76, where Jet now slows down time, allowing for greater damage concentration and accuracy. The game is very direct with stating that Jet is methamphetamine, which we know to be a very addictive stimulant to the central nervous system. This psychostimulant is interesting, because it is synthesized in Fallout 2 by the oh-so-annoying Myron using Brahmin dung, which really makes one wonder what those Brahmin are eating, or what weird things are happening during digestion. Its effects and hardcore addictiveness means that it plagues locations like New Reno. There are, however, even more addictive variants of Jet, including Jet Beta, which was never shown in Fallout 2, but was mentioned to have been developed to replace Jet because it was so much more addictive. According to lore, those addicted to Jet Beta preferred the chem over food and would regularly kill others just to get access to it. Other variants include Ultra Jet, Dixon's Jet, Rocket, Myron's Jet, and Jet Fuel. All of these have more or less the same effects, however, Jet Fuel is found in Fallout 4 and actually has the same effects as New Vegas and Fallout 3 in regenerating action points and not slowing down time. There is also a Jet Antidote that can be developed with the help of the Chosen One in Fallout 2 which may be analogous to Methadone. I find it interesting that Ultra Jet from Fallout 3 is created using Jet and some ingredient from Sugar Bomb cereal which raises some serious questions. Chris Avalone is credited with creating Jet and based the look on his brother's asthma inhaler. Most people are familiar with the lore issue regarding Jet and how it was found in a pre-war vault in Fallout 4. While I won't speak to this at much length, something I have not seen considered when people are talking about this controversy is the fact that Jet in Fallout 4 and Fallout 76 has a different effect from all the other games and it is actually Jet Fuel that has the same action point increase effect. Could this be a case where the same name was given to two different drugs in the wasteland? I think this has the potential to be explored a bit more, especially considering the heated discussions and agitation that has come from this apparent retcon. Day Tripper is a chem in Fallout 4 and Fallout 76, and is not to be confused with a perk in Fallout New Vegas of the same name. It increases luck and charisma while decreasing strength and is found in a green bottle with the name printed on a label with flowers that have a very 60s hippie vibe to them. A Fallout 4 loading screen describes it as something for people looking for a happy escape and was used by many kinds of people who were unhappy with their pre-war lives. We are only left to speculate about what kind of chem it was, but it most likely was a pill considering it comes in a bottle and the sound when taken in Fallout 4 sounds like the other pill-based chems like Buff Out. Based on the 60s style label and the positive effects on charisma and luck, I would imagine that the chem would be something akin to either a mild hallucinogen or marijuana. Since it comes in a bottle, it seems most likely that it could have been psilocybin aka magic mushrooms, which was also popular during the counterculture movement. Hydra is a very interesting chem, as it was developed by the Legion who disapproved of so-called modern medicine. In order to help their soldiers heal faster, they created a concoction of cave fungus, night stalker blood, antivenom, and rad scorpion poison. It looks like a soda bottle, 
with smaller vials of all the ingredients attached to the side with tubing that looks like it combines all the ingredients right before it's drunk from the main bottle. It is an anesthesia and helps limb damage heal more quickly. There are a number of plants that have anesthetic properties and different poisons and venoms can have different effects when taken in very low doses. Now, this is where I'm going to bring up a really pedantic point. So if you don't really like pedantry, then I don't know what you're doing listening to my channel. Scorpions do not have poison, they have venom. The main distinction being that a poison is something that is harmful when ingested, and venom is harmful when injected into the body. Rad scorpions would have a venom gland, unless rather than stinging, they would just water gun shoot poison into your face. And it is interesting that Hydra has both anti-venom and rad scorpion venom, possibly trying to get some benefit from the rad scorpion venom, but needing the anti-venom to keep you from completely killing yourself. Medex is a chem that was introduced in Fallout 3 and has been in every game since. It increases the user's damage resistance, and in Fallout 4 and 76 will also increase the user's poison resistance. It is administered via hypodermic needle, and is very commonly found in first aid containers. The ubiquity of the chem makes sense given that Medix was originally meant to be morphine, which is a well-known and used opiate painkiller. The effect of increasing damage resistance would also make sense if the user suddenly was not able to feel much pain. The entire reason for the chem to be named Medex was because the game could not be released with the chem being named Morphine, so Bethesda changed it so that the game could be raided and sold in Australia. This is also a great place to plug my favorite Fallout 3 armor, which is the Prototype Medic Power Armor, which is a unique set of T45 armor that auto-injects you with Medex from your inventory when your health is low and gives you great Drill Sergeant words of encouragement. Steady is a Fallout New Vegas only chem that has a very specific purpose and very mysterious ingredients. When administered, it eliminates sway when aiming down the sights, making it easier to get shots on target and it can also drastically improve the odds of hitting a target in vats. It appears to be contained in a glass bottle with what appears to be a metal heating element that would be exposed to a flame and a long tube where the user would inhale. We don't know any more about the chem, however, we can speculate, given the effects it has, that the chem could very well be some sort of muscle relaxant. Different relaxants work in different ways, some reducing the amount of neuromuscular transmission that comes to muscles, and others reduce muscle spasms, and are called what might be my new favorite word to say, spasmolytics. Be careful when using it though, since the very useful effect it provides makes it have the highest addiction rate of any chem in Fallout New Vegas, which sits at a whopping 80%. Rebound is one of the coolest looking chems, as it is composed of a hip flask with small tubes leading from some vials that are attached to it. A little less cool is the large hypodermic needle protruding from the hip flask. Rebound is only found in New Vegas and has the same effect as Jet, where it increases AP. In contrast to the instant AP boost from Jet, the user gets a steady increase in action points over time, which may be more useful in certain situations. Due to this, there is a good chance that it is also an amphetamine, just like Jet. What I want to know though, is how exactly is this used? Do you just jab it into your body and leave it there while you run around the wasteland? The hip flask and steady increase in AP leads me to believe that it is supposed to stay in the user for a while, steadily administering the chemicals, which honestly just sounds terrible. Mentats is another chem that is extremely well known and spans all the Fallout games, starting with the original Fallout. In Fallout, Fallout 2, and Fallout Tactics, Mentats increase intelligence, perception, and charisma. In Fallout 3, the charisma boost was dropped, but Fallout New Vegas saw it come back, so it had the same effects as the original games. Fallout 4 and 76 then went on to drop the charisma boost again. And I think I'm seeing a pattern here. Bethesda and Black Isle slash Obsidian 
really cannot agree on everything this chem does. Regardless, the iconic package hasn't changed, and we see that they are red pills from the description found in the early fallouts. Given the effects of this chem, it would be considered a nootropic drug, which are drugs developed to increase cognitive abilities and neural plasticity. It is hotly debated whether there are any true nootropics, as oftentimes things like Adderall and Ritalin are considered by some to be nootropics, but are stimulants that help increase attention rather than true cognition enhancers. Lore seems pretty definitive about Mentat's ability to increase intelligence as a pre-war school principal distributed Mentats to his students secretly, and the intelligence boost effects seemed permanent rather than temporary as experienced in the game. It was also shown to increase attentiveness, like a stimulant, and help treat Alzheimer's by decreasing its symptoms. There are also documented issues with intense migraines and neurological conditions with excessive use and withdrawal. The chem was very popular before the Great War, and is therefore easy to find, but was also reproduced by the professor in Fallout 2, increasing its availability. There are many variants including grape, berry, and orange that have different stat boosts and a special kind called party time that can be made in Fallout New Vegas that boosts charisma to party levels. Smooch is a special mention because it was a chem meant to debut in Van Buren. It was to be produced by someone in the post-war world and was represented by a greasy green goo. We don't know what stat boost it was supposed to give, but we know it delivers a mellowness with intense elation. The best comparison as far as effects go would probably be MDMA, otherwise known as ecstasy. The chem was to play a pretty big role in the game that would heavily change the outcome of some areas if the player helped increase production while never investing time into an antidote. Turbo is a Fallout New Vegas special that appears to simply be a jet inhaler that has been duct taped into a can of hairspray. Although this appearance certainly seems janky, because it is, it has a really useful effect of slowing down the player's perception of time. The way that this happens, the player is able to get more attacks in while enemies are slowed, effectively increasing your ability to do damage. This is the same exact effect that Jet has in Fallout 4 and Fallout 76. It is pretty obvious from the chem's appearance that it is Jet, which is a type of amphetamine again, and since it is a hairspray bottle, the active chemical would probably be chlorofluorocarbon, which causes oxygen deprivation in the brain. This chem can be made by the player after completing the Abadaba Honeymoon quest, and the only other thing in game that has a similar effect is the Implant GRX, which can slow down time once every 24 hours and also will not get you hopelessly addicted. So that's good. Psycho is another Fallout classic and has been in every single game in the series. It is recognizable as a large hypodermic needle with some other vials that have small hoses leading from them to the big needle. While not a unique look for Fallout chems by any means, it has the effect of increasing damage resistance. In Fallout and Fallout 2, it increases damage resistance and agility while making intelligence take a hit. In Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas, it increases damage resistance only. In Fallout 4 and Fallout 76, it increases damage resistance and damage output as well. This makes sense given the history and the development of this chem. It was created by the U.S. Army to increase the battle effectiveness of U.S. troops. The chem increases aggression, decreases pain, and intoxicates to a certain degree. Apparently it is not too difficult to create as post-war plants like the hub flower can be used as an ingredient to make it and it is frequently trafficked by raider gangs. This chem is stated as being an amphetamine that is legally distinct from methamphetamine which apparently makes it okay in the eyes of the government and some other unknown additives to get the full effect. The pursuit of a super soldier serum isn't as sci-fi as one might imagine, since many armies in the past, and I would wager many in the present, have tried such things. Infamously, the Nazis had 
Panzer Schokolade, a tanker's chocolate that was spiked with methamphetamine. Other countries, including Japan, the US, and Britain, were also known for using amphetamines to varying degrees to keep their soldiers alert and energized. More recently, jihadist fighters have been recorded using amphetamines as well. So it is certainly in the realm of reality that Fallout's version of the world would be just as interested in potential super soldier drugs. Or you can be me and just take it because we think it's hilarious to listen to the soul survivor scream like a lunatic. Voodoo is a chem only appearing in Fallout Tactics, and not too much is known about it. It appears to be in a canteen of sorts, implying it may be a liquid or maybe a powder. Its effects are numerous, increasing agility, luck, damage resistance, and critical chance at the cost of some charisma and intelligence. The only clue as to what it might be is in an in-game description that states that it comes from, and I quote, the leftover byproducts of various critters. This doesn't leave us much to go on, but I gather from this that it may be the result of bacterial or fungal alteration of the remains of animals. Some sort of fungus or mushroom seems plausible, as they have a wide range of poisons and exotic chemicals with many varieties having medicinal or psychoactive effects. We are not given enough information to make a really good guess, although it is interesting to note that if the character takes the chem five consecutive times, then they will die. Excel is only found in Fallout 4 and Fallout 76 and is a very rare chem. It has arguably one of the biggest boosts in the series, increasing every special stat by two for a limited time. It also appears to be a very futuristic inhaler with two blue vials that contain the chem. It was created before the Great War and was only ever in the prototype stage, therefore its availability is very limited. This is another one that is difficult to speculate about, a real world analog, because of the lack of information regarding the chem and the extremely wide range of effects. It could be a combination of known chemicals, or, given its futuristic look and prototype status, it could even be something like an epigenetic drug. Epigenetic drugs don't change a cell's DNA, but they alter how these genes are expressed. Although this is a process that takes a long time with regular exposure, our bodies undergo epigenetic modification as we engage in different activities. Smokers, for example, cause epigenetic changes due to the chemicals that they introduce into their bodies, and with time, can have some distinct differences from non-smokers. Theoretically, these drugs could introduce changes to the body that could increase various attributes. It would also make the name X-Cell, which is spelled X-C-E-L-L, make more sense since there are changes being done on a cellular level. However, given that X cell activates rapidly, this might be an argument against it being epigenetic in nature, although you never know what fallout technology is capable of. We don't know who or for what reason the chem was being developed, but the chem is described as having a high likelihood for addiction at 35%. Although truthfully, this is nowhere near the 80% we see for Steady. Radaway may seem a weird entry on this list, since it seems less like a chem and more like a treatment. It also doesn't make sense because Radaway is not addictive, right? Well, that is where you're halfway right. In the original Fallout, Fallout 2, and Fallout Tactics, Radaway carries a 10% chance of causing addiction. This addiction had the paradoxical effect of decreasing radiation resistance until you found more Radaway or cured the addiction. The chem has always been depicted as being contained in an IV bag and being administered intravenously, which raises some eyebrows when you just decide to pop some Radaway in the middle of traversing the wasteland. It is designed to bind to radioactive particles within the body so that they can be flushed out through natural bodily processes. Radiation treatment drugs that are commonly used in our world include potassium iodide, 
which keeps the thyroid gland stocked with necessary iodine and preventing it from taking in too much radioactive iodine. Radiogardase, which binds to radioactive isotopes of cesium and thallium, and helps the body excrete it quickly, reducing potential damage from radiation, and my word of the day, diethylene triamine, pentaacetic acid, which similarly binds to elements like plutonium, americium, and curium to be quickly excreted. Given the description stating that Radaway binds to radioactive elements, I think it is likely it is either one or both of the latter two with the radiation blocker Radex maybe being or containing potassium iodide. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. I know some of these can run a bit long, but there's just so much to talk about when it comes to fallout lore, and I, for one, am happy about that. Please all take care of yourselves and remember to walk in Adam's glow. See you in my next video.